Okay, so in the last class we were talking about um, one dimensional motion of particle through a fluid, right? Okay, so um, what we did was we kind of came up with a, a governing equation uh, that basically describes, you know, when a particle is moving in a fluid, but that's in one, di one dimension. Um, such a case, I mean, as we were discussing, it could be a simple, you know, if you take a case where if you have a, a column of liquid, say that the column, uh, the liquid in the column is stagnant. And if you have a particle that is moving under the, ex under the influence of an external force. So we basically set up a, a working equation, right? And uh, that working equation looked something like this, right? A times E into rho P minus rho divided by rho p, right? Was it rho p or? Yeah, rho p, right? Okay, minus um, cd into ap into rho v square by two times m was equal to dv by dt, right? That's the, the working equation, right? Everybody knows how to get this, right? Now, um, as I was saying, this is this equation is a is a general equation, which is valid for particle of any shape, right? And uh, for any fluid particle combinations, right? Now, if you want to uh, simplify this further, um, so before we do that, uh, I said that, you know, uh, as soon as a, as a, the particle is dropped into the column, uh, what will happen is you'll start with the particle being at rest. Okay. Now, once you drop it, it's going to accelerate, right? And then this acceleration is going to die down soon because of the fact that there's a, a drag force that is acting on the particle and ultimately the particle will start moving with a, a constant velocity, right? Okay. So at some point in time, your acceleration is going to be zero. Okay. That's because the particle is going to reach a, a constant velocity and you can get that constant velocity as, as I mentioned in the previous class, it is denoted by UT or the terminal velocity. People also call it as terminal settling velocity. And that we obtained it as uh, some a times e into rho p minus rho divided by rho p into 2 times m, right, divided by c d a p into rho under square root, okay, right, that's what we had developed, okay. Now, if you want to um, simplify this further, uh, I was mentioning that, you know, you would have to, so of course, we talked about two different cases, right? One, I can say that AE is the acceleration because of the external force, okay? It could be working with any external force that you wish, okay? But if you take a simple case of external force being gravity, okay, we said your AE is gonna be G, which is the acceleration due to gravity. And of course, if you take your acceleration, if your external force is like say centrifugal force, okay, you're gonna replace that a with r omega square, right? So now, um, if you want to simplify this further, uh, we said that you know we should know what is the the CD, right? If you look at the, the equation here, uh, right? Rho p is a you know the property of the particle. Rho is a fluid. Okay, a p is so there are certain pro certain parameters which depend on the fluid, and there are certain parameters that depend on the the fluid that you are considering, right? Now, if you want to simplify this further, uh, we said that you would have to go back and look up things like this. Okay, this is a an example where you know what is plotted is a the drag coefficient C D on the y axis versus Reynolds number on the x axis, right? If you look at this plot, there are kind of two limiting cases. Okay. Um, one is in the low Reynolds number regime, okay, when the Reynolds number is less than one, okay, your your CD versus Reynolds number can be represented by an empirical equation, which is something like CD is equal to 24 divided by Reynolds number. Okay, I can simplify the expression that we just wrote for the Stokes law settling regime. And if you look at the high Reynolds number regime, when your Reynolds number is more than thousand, up to about 200,000, your drag coefficient more or less remains constant, right? Uh, typically about 0 
Therefore, what I can do is I can actually substitute for these things in the working equation. So what I, I'm going to do is uh, simplify this. Okay, so let's uh, okay. So so therefore your ut okay was um, uh, if I take a e to be g right. So it was uh, two times uh, m times g into rho p minus rho divided by uh, c d a p into rho under square root, right? That was the, did I miss something? I have uh, rho p as well, okay? Right, so now what I can do is, you have m here, right? And you have rho p here. I can replace that with v p, which is the volume of the particle, right? And I also have c d, which, sorry, a p, which is, as I said, it's a projected area, which is pi, dp square by 4 okay and cd as we have been saying this is cd is 24 divided by particle Reynolds number or rep or nrep therefore that is 24 divided by dp ut rho divided by mu right where mu is the uh, <coughs> viscosity of the fluid so if you put in this Okay, uh, we can do that quickly. Um, so therefore, your ut is going to be two times uh, instead of m divided by rho p, I'm going to put it as pi dp q by six. Right, that's your volume. Right, uh, multiplied by I have g uh, rho p minus rho divided by I have cd here, so I'm going to uh, write it as uh, Okay, let's do for AP first. AP is going to be, I'm going to have 4 in the numerator. It's pi dp square. That's for AP, right? And I also have rho here. Now, for um, Reynolds number, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to multiply it by mu divided by 24 times dp uh, ut into rho. Right, that's your mistake. So your CD is 24 divided by Reynolds number, right? So that's going to be dpv bar rho by mu. Uh, that's going to be, that's right, right? So therefore, I can cancel these two here. And I can cancel, okay, I think I've done a mistake, right? This is, this is going to be, is going to be uh, dp here uh, into ut here into rho divided by mu, right? Yeah. So then, then you have dp square here and there's dp power 4. So this is going to be dp square will come in the numerator. So you have uh, 4 here and there's going to be Uh, 6 right therefore there's 1 here 3 here okay so therefore basically if you uh, work it out and of course your row and row is going to get cancelled okay um, therefore if you work it out it turns out that you know, your ut is going to be g into dp square into rho p minus rho divided by 18 mu because 3 times 6 is 18 and you want to have mu in the you know, de denominator and your numerator is going to be GDP square into rho p minus rho. Okay, you can work it, work this out. Okay, this is the, uh, the working equation. If you have, like say a particle which is settling in the, settling in the Stokes regime. Okay, Stokes regime is basically if you have your particle Reynolds number is less than one, your UT is going to be G into DP square into rho p minus rho divided by 18 mu okay now similarly if you work out for Reynolds number 
that is greater than 1000 but less than 200,000 okay in that case your CD is going to be constant and that is 0 0.44 okay if you substitute for CD in the expression for UT and then if you simplify it further what you would do is you would get UT as 1.75 into square root of G into rho P minus rho into dp divided by rho okay you can work this out at home okay therefore these are the two limiting cases for the settling of particles in a fluid okay the you know expressions for the terminal velocities which are applicable for the limiting cases one for when the Reynolds number is less than one is what is called as a Stokes settling regime okay other for cases where the Reynolds number is in between 1000 and 200,000 is something called as a Newton's settling regime okay now so of course these are applicable for spherical particles right because that's what we considered in this case by uh, dp square by 4 being substituted for ap which is the projected area which is only true for spherical particle right so therefore um, if you have other objects of other sizes okay so it turns out that um, just uh, so if you want to generalize for you know particles of any shape uh, what you should do is you should have some correlations like this okay what you are seeing in the plot is again cd versus Reynolds number but if you look it up there are different plots okay there's one plot for cylinders um sorry for the spherical particles it's a continuous line right the continuous line is for the spherical particles which which we just saw right the two limiting cases of cd being 0.44 or cd being 24 by Reynolds number and the other two are for particles of different shapes okay one is for disks other one is for cylinders and these have been generated by taking particles of particles of particular dimension and particular um, shape and they have been held in some particular condition for example in this case axis of the cylinder and face of the disc are perpendicular to the flow direction okay if you have a, a liquid that is flowing the axis is in a direction perpendicular to the flow okay that's like this okay therefore when you want to work out the equation for settling velocities for different shape particles you would have to worry about the orientation of the particle as well okay whether the the particle is oriented in the direction or in the direction perpendicular to the flow okay uh, when the particle is oriented perpendicular it's something called a bluff body is okay that's the terminology that people use okay in the literature so therefore i would have to take care of you know such issues when you want to simplify these equations for further for uh, calculating settling velocities for different shape objects um, now okay if you are given a problem that uh, say that a problem is given to you and you want uh, and they want you to calculate what is the the settling velocity of the particles okay um, now how would you go about doing this so say that you know there is an there is a problem that is given uh, i can say that Hey, there's a particle of uh, 100 micrometer diameter. It is uh, settling in a uh, liquid column. Uh, say that the column is filled with water. I'll give the density of the liquid, you know, water, and then also the uh, viscosity of the fluid. And if you were to ask to calculate what is the settling velocity of the particle, how would you go about um, doing the calculations? So one crude way of doing this would be uh, you calculate your ut okay for the stokes regime okay get what is your ut okay and then from that you basically calculate what is the reynolds number after that i have done the settling velocity calculations you assume that you know ut is say g dp square into rho p minus rho divided by 18 mu you calculate the settling velocity then you get ut 
then you back calculate what is your Reynolds number. Okay, if it is d okay uh, ut by mu, right? If the Reynolds number falls less than one, then I say that you know uh, whatever I assume that the particle is settling in the Stokes regime is correct. Okay, therefore my assumption is right. Okay, uh, but that need not be the case all the time, right? You know you can end up with a Reynolds number which could be more than one. It could be more than thousand. So therefore you kind of come up with a kind of a dilemma as to you know whether I should be using the Stokes regime or the settling regime or the Newton's regime. Okay, so therefore uh, what you can do is you can come up with a simple non-dimensional number, okay, which which can help us in terms of identifying the settling regime without going into this guesswork. Okay, I said that the guesswork is you assume that you know the particle is settling in the Stokes regime. You calculate ut, back calculate your Reynolds number, see whether it's less than one or you know, tip, look at the typical range, a typical number that you get out of the calculation, and then. If that's not the case, then you go back and then assume the Newton's regime and then again calculate ut, calculate again Reynolds number, right? So instead of doing that, what you can do is you can rearrange the expression that you have for, for um, um, your settling velocities, right? I know that ut is gdp square into rho p minus rho divided by 18 mu for the Stokes regime, okay? I know that, you know, my Reynolds number okay for the upper limit of the Reynolds number for Stokes regime is 1 right anything less than 1 is a so now what I can do is I can substitute dp into rho into ut divided by mu I can substitute for ut from the Stokes regime so what, what do you get sorry Okay, that's going to be uh, your g dp square into rho p minus rho divided by 18 mu, right? So, what I can write this as, uh, so this is going to be, I'm going to write it as q, okay, ouch, okay. And uh, I'm going to write this as 1 over 1 over 20, right? Now, let's look at uh, the exact similar formulation for, uh, so we know that your Reynolds number should be more than 1000 for the Newton settling regime. So, similarly, I can write the Reynolds number as dp into rho by mu into 1.75 right square root of g into rho p minus rho into dp divided by uh, rho right that's your expression for the so now what i can do is i can take the dp inside right so i can write as dpq right i'm going to take is that okay? Okay, and then I have rho here. Again, I'm going to take rho square inside. I'm going to write as rho square. Okay, and of course, there's going to be mu square as well, right? Okay, so now I'm going to cancel a few things, right? So that's going to be uh, there's one mu goes right and uh, what else do I have okay but I've forgotten yeah so that should be okay so did I do a mistake here no right 18 oh there's gonna be mu square here right yeah right okay so look at look at the term that is in the okay there's g here right there's dp cube here there's rho p minus rho did I cancel one of the, what's the expression for the Stokes setting regime? Hmm, I had a mistake, right? There's no, 
uh, there is no okay. so what we did is right right dp into rho was in the numerator okay that's going to be the numerator square here so can you help me out so i have 1.75 okay let me just write it so your is 1.75 into square root of g into rho p minus rho into dp divided by rho right that's my Reynolds number so your okay that's going to be there's going to be rho square here and there's going to be there's rho here so therefore that seems okay oh yeah so it's okay right so i think that's fine so i have a rho here right i have a row here g here right dp cube rho p minus rho mu square is it okay therefore i can actually define a factor k okay i can define a factor k as g dp cube into rho p minus rho into rho here divided by mu square to the power of one third, right? So therefore, this is going to be one over eighteen into k q. Okay, and here it's going to be one point seven five. Okay, again into k q to the power of one and a half. Is it okay? Is it okay? So therefore, from the just by re rearranging the two expressions that we had, one for the Stokes settling regime, another for one for the Newton settling regime, what we have been able to do is we have been able to get one over eighteen into k cube is equal to one is the case for Stokes settling regime. Okay, and one point seven five. Into k to the power of one point five is equal to thousand for the Newton's settling regime. Okay, if you work it out, in this case your k comes to be something like two point six. Okay, if I you know k cube is eighteen. Okay, therefore k is going to be cube root of eighteen. So that's going to be two point six. Okay, and similarly the k for the Newton's settling regime comes out to be something like um, 68.9 okay 68.9 if i substitute the lower limit of the Reynolds number for the Re Newton's regime and if i substitute the higher limit of the Reynolds number which is 200 Thousand, your k comes out to be something like um, two thousand three hundred and sixty. Okay, therefore, okay, the idea is this. Okay, so what you do is you calculate the k, okay, which is basically defined as g d p cube into rho p minus rho into rho divided by mu to the power of one third. You calculate that if the value of the k that you obtain if it is less than 2.6 okay then you use the settling velocity for the stokes regime and calculate your terminal velocities okay however if the k factor that you are getting if it is between 68.9 and 2360 okay that's the the range of reynolds number over which the settling occurs in the turbulent condition that is the newton settling regime okay in such case you would have to use the appropriate expression for the terminal velocity for the you know uh, particle in the uh, newton's regime okay so therefore uh, this formalism okay in terms of calculating k okay as a criteria for deciding whether i should go for a, a stokes or the newton's settling regime is useful okay instead of doing a, a guesswork of assuming a particular settling regime and then back calculating your Reynolds number okay any questions? Do you have any questions with this? 
okay it was just a manipulation right it was just a rearranging of you know the expression for each of these you know ut's and then you know equating that to the limiting value of the renaults number for respective conditions okay that's all we done yeah okay so um yeah so now we'll talk a little bit about um, before we talk about applications of these things okay so now uh, what you see is a is a plot okay of uh, variation of settling velocity uh, with size okay on the y axis you have terminal velocity on the x axis you have equivalent spherical diameter okay and and there are different curves right one to you know they are numbered from 1 to 9 okay and they have taken different fluids you know for example 3 is aniline um 7 is nitrobenzene okay so basically what we are looking at is a case of fall of liquid drops in water okay so far when we looked at settling we only talked about solid particles right we talked about spherical particles rigid you know hard particles now if you were to plot terminal velocity is a function of size of the particle okay it would always be a a monotonically increasing function right because in the case of stoke settling your ut goes as dp square right and in the case of newton's settling regime it goes as dp to the power of half right so therefore in both the cases as i increase the size my settling velocity should always go on increasing right that means it's a a monotonically increasing function okay now if you look at this plot okay can you see some difference okay the first difference which is very apparent is that it looks like the settling velocity increases okay in analogy with what what is known okay Uh, for smaller dimension for example maybe in the range from 0.0 to 0.6 okay in that centimeter size range the terminal velocity increases with size however it attains a maxima and it it basically drops back right okay so any thoughts as to why that could be the case so everybody understand the plot right is a plot of terminal velocity is a function of equivalent spherical diameter so why does equivalent spherical why is it why is it not the diameter of the drop why is it a equivalent spherical diameter okay the the obvious answer is going to be because the drop right the drops can also change the the shape so therefore when one is dealing with drops in a fluid i would have to worry about shape changes okay that means depending upon so the reason why it would go to a maximum and then drop off because one naive answer could be that in the initial for the smaller size regime the part the droplets will remain spherical okay however when you make the droplets bigger and bigger at some point they're going to flatten right they're going to flatten and then your drag is going to be more okay more drag drag means is going to settle slower right so anyway we can think of we'll, we'll argue a little bit along these lines in 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 a minute this again some another some data again for so i don't know if you noticed this right this is a paper from IIT Kharagpur which is published in 1950s okay so people were worrying about settling of you know droplets and you know other stuff you know then itself right because it's and again the settling of drops in a fluid is all is also relevant to one of the common thing that you guys see um an example rain drops right okay when 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 the rain falls right is going to be these are going to be water droplets okay as they approach earth they're going to again flatten in the direction you know of the gravity right so so in depending upon the size of the droplets that 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 are going to be generated okay if the size of the droplets are very very small 
then you can assume the drops to be spherical in shape okay they would you know come like a hard sphere however if you have a if there's a larger rain drop the moment it exceeds a particular size if i were to go by this plot uh, for like say 4 which is some carbon disulfide okay uh, there's a peak right i can draw a vertical line and, and i can actually get what is the the limiting size for which the droplet behaves like a sphere but beyond that line you know where you see the drop in the terminal velocity that's when the shape changes shape, shape change would have occurred okay uh, again there are more data this is again from some other people uh, again the characteristic uh, peak in the terminal velocity followed by a you know a decrease is evident here as well any thoughts as to why the 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 other nice things to notice is you know the peak where it the the appearance of the peak right is seems to be shifting towards smaller sizes right if i look at the bottommost plot which is for aniline right or the topmost plot which is for tetra bromo ethane it turns out that you know, the peak is kind of shifted right to the left side okay any thoughts why it could be that's because there are different density right if you look at these fluids uh for example aniline has a density of 1.02 okay which is very much close to that of water right however if you look at tetra bromo ethane the density is 1 2.97 much denser okay again that's also evident from the slope right if the slope the slope for at least in the initial regime where there is a linear increase right the slope is larger for 2.97 because the density difference is more we know that they should be settling much faster right compared to the case where the density difference is very little for the case of aniline right um uh, this is a plot of again black coefficient as a function of renaults number uh it appears that for the the low renaults number cases okay for example renaults number from a, from 10 to about 400 okay roughly okay all the data for the droplet seems to be in line with what is expected for solid spheres okay but however if you go for larger renaults number larger renaults number is because larger dimensions larger size of the droplets therefore you you can see a a significant change okay that you see because that's evident from the upturn of this cd versus renaults number plot right again this is another indication of the fact that the the droplets have changed their shape and one has to worry about such things you know when you look at these are some images from again different literature um at the extreme um the plot on the left again extreme left case that, that's where the the droplet continues to remain in the spherical shape during its settling okay however if you consider a larger droplet it turns out that you know that the drop start becoming elongated right and this elliptical the, the deformation of the droplet leads to droplets being in different shapes and of course because of that your drag force is going to be very different than what you would see for the spherical particle case and that's therefore you would you would expect that you know the particles would slow down because of the increase in the drag force okay so in general uh, the main reasons for the difference between the motion of the liquid drops and that of the rigid spheres is because of the different deformation of the drops okay which becomes evident when you go for larger sized droplets okay number 1 and this deformation can lead to either shape changes or shape oscillations okay if you look at the movies of you know how these droplets settle you know you will see that you know the drops start going from one shape to the other okay there's going to be drop shape fluctuations which you you would have to worry about okay and whenever you have a a smooth or a you know a liquid like surface okay um, the flow on the surface as well as flow within the droplets are going to be different okay in the case of solid spheres i don't have to worry about flow within the particle right however in the case of you know liquid droplets there're going to be some internal circulations which can also lead to you know, changes in the the way the uh, droplet would behave in a fluid okay so therefore so when when you're working with spherical particles spherical particles or rigid particles of well defined shape and dimension okay things are kind of fairly well laid out okay that means you know there is a cd versus renaults number plot you should know a little bit about settling regime you know the correlation between cd and renaults number all of that is kind of well laid out you know you can use those things to understand the settling behavior behavior of solid particles however if you go to 
liquid drops such as bubbles okay you'll have to worry about some of these considerations okay